Okay, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Um, slight correction. Uh, the way I'm going to make this presentation is to try and reinterpret whatever we've done in terms of how somebody like us would be attracted to make an investment in, in a city uh, in Sri Lanka, in Colombo, in this case. So most of my presentation is geared around that, rather than going into the intricacies of what we actually did. And so here we go. Uh, I'll cover a small recap on some of the core dimensions that we would talk. Most of what you will see in this presentation has in many ways got covered over yesterday and part of today. So I'm going to speed through that. And I think being one of the last sessions, that's also a test of, you know, we, we run it fast. and. How much of it can you see is, is one test, just to help people stay awake, I suppose. Uh, what are the drivers for this kind of investment? And how does the government and the private sector come together to make this happen? And uh, a small couple of slides on what we are doing to execute this project. So predominantly, we serve an international customer, also the domestic customer. We compete. This destination has to compete with other destinations in the region for business. And therefore, it has to have its own unique positioning and that much appeal to let those people come. Uh, one of the core uh, fundamentals that has governed most of hospitality now and is becoming uh, regulation almost is sustainability. And we just heard, and rightly so, that uh, there are three dimensions. There's an economic di dimension. There's an environmental dimension, and there's a social dimension, and we strongly push all three of them. And uh, if done properly, it's, it's a great uh, generator of employment, is a great redistributor of wealth. It, it's got a lot of economic linkages and benefits uh, for the economy as such. Uh, we already saw that it's a very large contributor globally. Oops. So uh, it's a large foreign exchange earner, even for Sri Lanka. And compared to other sectors, for every dollar invested, the spread effects of that economic activity are much more. So uh, many more jobs, uh, many more jobs compared to other sectors, uh, per million dollars invested. And uh, a lot of focus on youth. So typically, uh, when you're looking at large number of people to be employed at the entry level, it's a great industry to promote. So it binds nation together and it redistributes income. And that's the great opportunity that we have here in Sri Lanka. So uh, we have to promote all those products that are available locally, naturally, and make that a unique competitive position for Sri Lanka to have. Uh, one of the core issues on competition is that we need to benchmark taxation on tourism to competing destinations and therefore have a level playing field so that industry here has the same chance to compete and perform as other destinations that compete for the same traveler. Uh, we need to tap into tourist inflows in the region, which is Africa, Dubai, India, East Asia, China. We have to create islands of, uh, of excellence and incentivize events to be held because the big mice segment movements that come here have a lot of spread effects on getting other movements to come. So there are two uh, small examples, examples that I would like to put forward. One is Singapore. From 2000, in, in the year 2000, there are six million visitors and they're gone to 15 in four years. So we, we talked about two million and for this two million to get to 10 million, uh, it should happen pretty fast. If, a lot of things happen. And that's uh, mainly what I like to talk about. Bhutan, it had no tourism. They opened up in 1974, and they got 133,000. They are focusing on high value tourism. So every tourist who now comes in spends upwards of $500 per head. And it's typically one or two days that they stay, see the place. It's a very tiny place. So at least it gives some pointers on uh, which way and how sustainable things can be. So. Uh, the, the other uh, core idea for tourism especially is that we sell experiences. We, we don't sell rooms, we don't sell anything, but the customer experience is what is key. And we need to see what drives customer experience. Now, for a city hotel, like the investment we are putting in, it's a gateway city, people come in. The leisure activities 
predominantly happen outside the city. So what does it take to attract investment into the city? We need to have a boost on reasons to travel. And uh, this presentation was set up a bit earlier, but in the last budget, I find that a lot of these have been at least addressed and mentioned. Now, key, of course, would be how they get executed and what really happens on the ground. But I think all the right moves have been, make, uh, have been made, and there is uh, a lot of purpose in getting multiple reasons for people to come into Sri Lanka. And that is what makes it attractive as a destination. The other core issue, and I think this has also been discussed since yesterday, is that while there are a lot of good things happening, the understanding of what is happening in Sri Lanka outside of Sri Lanka is low. And therefore, there has to be a very serious marketing effort that goes on to get Sri Lanka as a destination to be on par with other destinations that compete with it. And this is where government and uh, private sector come together. Now, I have one study here which I just like to mention. And this is about what makes destinations uh, attractive. And uh, WPP, which is the largest marketing outfit in the world, and the Wharton School uh, out of uh, the US did a joint study as to how do you rank the most attractive destinations for investment? And uh, it's the first study where they correlated all the features that they were putting up with growth in GDPs. So the numbers that you see are those correlations. And they're divided into various subjects. And this is it's available on the net. It's, it's public. Uh, what this tells us is that what people are generally looking for as far as tourism is concerned. They're looking for modern facilities, and they're looking for experiences that are very strongly embedded in local culture. And I think on both these counts, uh, there's a huge potential and a big opportunity. Sri Lanka has a lot to offer. And therefore, uh, if all policies and implementation of those policies gets aligned somewhat, uh, people are more interested in getting the perception right and where the country is going in future. And, less on what happened in the past. I think it's a great destination, and uh, investments will explode if some of these features can be leveraged. So there are systematic plans on various infrastructure investments, and I think those need to go forward. What is important is, simultaneously, the financial and legal frameworks to get investments in and let people transparently be able to deal with those investments. That is very important. And that includes a depth in the stock market. Uh, we did have some mention in the last budget on REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust. And I think all that needs to evolve to a much higher level. And I think the international financial center that the government is talking about is, is a very major step in that direction, though, of course, one has to see how it comes onto the ground. Um, so it's, it's really uh, various owners and various kinds of money that will come in and how the framework deals with all that in a very robust and transparent way. Sorry. Oh, oops. Uh, tourism grows when a lot of things coercively come together. And it really requires a, a lot of different parts of the government to work in some degree of cohesion to get an environment that will let people come in, feel safe, enjoy their experiences, and go out and have more and more of those. Uh, one of the best practices that is here, and I think uh, Sri Lanka is way ahead of at least India in that respect, we have a board of investment, we have the tourism board, and they're working very strongly and very much coercively uh, to get investments in. There's a lot more that could happen, there's a lot more professionalism that could go in, different kind of disciplines could grow further. Uh, but as a core, it's a great institution, and I think that's one of the best practices that is already here on the ground. Uh, industry also needs to organize itself because instead of multiple voices, if, if for some reason or in some manner they can come together and have a common platform, and I think even in the last uh, discussion we saw that, that would really give a, a lot of boost and a lot of focus on the way industry and the government interact and get far more meaningful uh, professional activity going in the way pro uh, proposals go, and the way industry responses to government policy also get triggered. So if all that happens, 
what would really happen because uh, it's at the end of the day a real estate play and so is there a boom time ahead for Colombo? And uh, some of the information I saw does suggest that yes, Colombo is in for a boom. So if you look at current prices at which new in real estate is getting sold here, it's perhaps one of the lowest globally. So if you have other major cities and other major uh, capitals around in the region, then Colombo real estate even at today's prices is one of the lowest available. Uh, in terms of 10-year residential capital growth, these are the numbers and here again the growths we have seen in Colombo uh, have been very low. So it's, it's, it's a place that is poised for growth. Uh, a lot of positive things have started happening. And my personal view is that five years down the line would be a very different position than what we have seen historically and what we have. So definitely there is a boom ahead for Colombo. Uh, uh, there are some forecasts that have been made here. This is a research uh, outfit that is based out of Colombo and London. And they put out these forecasts. So uh, my bet is that uh, if some of the things that have been said and some of the directions that are there in the budget come together, your actual growth could be higher than this. Uh, there's a lot uh, of discussion I've heard on the sidelines of the conference on you know, what current rates are and what current earnings are, but that is more extrapolating the past. And if you get the future right, then the future would go on a different uh, growth path. And we personally believe that that is the way it will go. And that's one of the reasons that there is investment and we've chosen to invest here. Um, in terms of our own investment, we've gone with basically two philosophies. One, uh, as a philosophy, uh, ITC believes that it, luxury has to be rooted in the soil. So while you have a modern development and you have all the modern facilities, the softer side of what you deliver has to be very much rooted in the culture of the place. And so that's something that all our hotels uh, have, even in India, and it's the same that's going to happen here. So we need to do justice to the location. We've got a prime location. Uh, the property has to be a tribute to Sri Lanka. It's a jewel in the crown of the hospitality sector. It has to be a symbol of the vibrant, uh, resurgent economic growth that ought to happen here. And I think it's, uh, we all owe it to the place and the country, and the country owes it to itself. The future generations see that growth and enjoy the kind of benefits and incomes that come with it. So the interiors of the property would reflect Sri Lanka's rich and glorious heritage. It would be a responsible luxury project. All our projects are very strong on sustainability. And therefore, it will also be an international icon and a key landmark. And that's the promise we have made, and that's what we will do. So what we, did we do to execute this? We had international architectural competition, and we had about five leading international architects compete for this. One of them won, and that is Gensler from Los Angeles. And this is the design that he has put forward. Thank you very much. Thank you, Aaron. Um, stick to timing. It, does it say time up, or have we got some yeah, time? Yeah. Oh, don't wait. Home. Just ignore that. We'll, we'll, we'll carry on. Actually, I apologize for my introduction, because you were going to do a Colombo case study, but that was your last slide. You're actually, your, all your previous slides were much more interesting anyway than uh, Great. You know, telling us all about uh, the framework and everything else. So how far, how far is Sri Lanka in terms of that framework? Are you, are, you, are you happy with the way things are progressing? It sounds like you are. I think... In terms of thinking, a lot of it is falling into place. We see it falling into place. And I think it's up to all the stakeholders to get together and take it forward. And the way things are, the way the compulsions are, I think the drive is more to get that on the ground and get the future sorted out. Right. So I think it's going the right way. OK, that's good. Um, and the previous session, we were talking about that, the getting the private sector together. Isn't that the role of the Chamber of Commerce, and shouldn't they be taking the lead on that? Of course. Uh, one of the points I made was to get the industry together. That means uh, the first question is how many Chambers of Commerce are there? Are there one? Are there many? Okay. And is there a way to get them all together and come onto a common platform? 
and look at the serious issues that are there with the industry, what standards, how do we subscribe to those standards, how do we adhere to those standards. So the industry plays its part, the government plays its part, the financial institutions play their part, it all works. Right, okay. Um, all right, and um, we heard yesterday uh, about taxes, and, and that's an issue at the moment for, for investors coming into the market. Is that a concern for you? Uh, yes, and I did cover it briefly. Uh, my position is that taxes are important to be paid, it's very important. But if as a destination we have to compete with other destinations, then we need to benchmark the level of taxation with what happens elsewhere so that there's an even playing field. So there has to be a balance between how much tax is paid and how much growth can be generated uh, so that the position in terms of having a larger cake to share is not getting disturbed. Okay, great. Um, do we have a, a burning question from the audience? No? Oh, here we go. We've got one over here. So what are, your de what are your current issues dealing with the present government? Uh, from when we started the project to now, we've seen two governments. Uh, we have largely dealt with the Board of uh, Investment, and uh, our experience has been excellent. We've never had a problem. We've never, uh, never had anybody coming and troubling us. We've, uh, we've got all our work enabled through the mechanism. So personally, from our experience, there are no negatives. Okay, great. Good. All right. Aaron, thank you so much. If you, thank everybody you. can show their appreciation to Aaron Hathek. <laughs> <laughs>